Uh, welcome to IntelliPAR Software Solutions Private Limited. We are the leading providers of online training on software testing. Today we will see a couple of topics which will give you a brief introduction of software testing. Uh, starting with it, we have the first chapter which says introduction to software testing. In this introduction chapter, we will go through different topics like SDLC, importance of software testing, STLC and the different types of testing. Now, in order to understand SDLC, let's see what does the abbreviation stand for. SDLC stands for Software Development Life Cycle. Uh, as you might be aware, SDLC has different phases such as requirements gathering and analysis, design, development, testing, deployment, and maintenance phase. Now, as we are aware that each phase of this SDLC has its own importance. Uh, within the SDLC, there is no single phase which can be eliminated or removed while you are actually developing an, an, an application. We will need to know all of these phases first before we get on to understand testing. The, the reason being, if you do not know the SDLC phases, you will not be sure of how to integrate testing within each of these phases. So in order to understand that, let's see the definition of each of these phases quickly. The first phase, which is the requirements gathering and analysis phase, this is the phase wherein the concept of the application to be developed or the mobile app or the website to be developed is initiated. In terms of concept, concept, uh, the inception of uh, the required solution is discussed in this particular phase wherein the high level requirements are documented. It could be documented by a client themselves, it could be documented by a business analyst or a project manager or a test uh, manager also depending upon what kind of application we are about to develop. Uh, a couple of times you might also require subject matter experts and domain experts, let's say for a banking or a finance application, when they want, when there is a requirement to document specific requirements uh, in terms of a particular industry or a sector. Now over here when you are documenting high level requirements, the artifacts that are required to be produced are called as BRD, FSD or similar. BRD basically stands for business requirements document and FSD stands for functional specifications document. So requirements gathering and analysis is phased down into two different uh, aspects. Requirements gathering is mostly the high level requirements gathering and analysis phase particularly covers questioning the high level requirements, asking detailed questions, uh, validating all those requirements and then documenting into different artifacts like what we mentioned is BRD and FSD. Next comes the phase which is design. In this phase, the technicalities of the application to be developed are discussed. In terms of technicalities, the important thing what we need to decide is the technology stack. Let's say what is the technology you would be using for UI, what is the technology you would be using for database, what will you utilize for coding, middleware, what are the servers that will be required what is the uh, kind of development expertise or utilities that you would be using. Also the hardware that needs to be uh, utilized, let's say if you're using Amazon uh, Web Services for uh, deployment, let's say if you need uh, Visual Studio, what version of Visual Studio do you need, what version of Java do you need and so on and so forth. And in addition to that, the most important thing what is covered in the design part is the high level design document and the low level design document. This basically gives you a technical workflow, a technical overview of the different hardware and software components and how they will be communicating with each other. So this is typically documented by the technical architect or the CTO or the development lead or the project manager depending upon who is playing the role in a particular project. The, the next phase obviously once the design phase is develop, uh, once the design phase is completed is the development phase. Now development phase is the phase wherein the actual coding or the actual execution of the design and the requirements is happening. So we are merging the requirements and the design together. We are utilizing the information what we collected in the earlier phases and then getting to the ground level and the development team is actually starting to code over here. Now in terms of code, what the development team is doing is writing different types of code for UI, for functionality, for the server side. They are debugging the code, optimizing the code and creating different builds of the application. Builds are nothing but packages of the application wherein all the UI, middleware, database, everything is packaged together so that a build can be deployed and tested or utilized by the end users. In the next comes the testing phase. Now it is not necessary that the testing phase 
definitely should come only after the development phase is completed. As I have mentioned in the first bullet point, the testing phase is triggered once development is complete or in progress. So what happens is once the development is in progress, the testing is also triggered once the requirements are finalized. So that the testing team can contribute in the requirements phase while the requirements are being analyzed and validated, while the design is being created from a technology uh, architecture perspective, from the uh, development perspective on when the code is written. So there is testing team involvement right throughout all the phases of the SDLC, which we will see in further uh, slides and further sections of uh, this learning program. In terms of uh, methodologies, there are different models that are implemented for different phases. There are There is a V model, there is iterative model, agile model and so on. We will see all of this in detail when we come to the particular section within the uh, program. In terms of uh, the development and testing getting over, what happens next is the deployment part. In the deployment is a specific activity which is carried out to deploy the particular build onto the required environment. It could be the test environment, the staging environment, or the production environment for the live uh, or the actual uses for the end usage. Then comes the maintenance phase, which is the last phase, which basically talks about maintaining the application when it is being used in the live environment. So there could be support required when the users are actually using the application. There could be issues coming up. There could be sanity checks that need to be done regularly to maintain the health of the application uh, so that it does not uh, this so, so that it does not uh, stop being used or, or there is no functional loss or there is no data loss when during its actual usage. So that is the last phase which is covered in SDLC. Now, uh, once now that you, we have looked at the SDLC phases, let's see on why is testing so important for us during all phases of SDLC. Typically what happens is testing helps you answer two questions. The first and foremost question is the application that you are developing. Is the application the right application that is being developed? So if you are trying to build an application which might already be there or which might not be something new or which is not answering a business purpose, then definitely it is not an application to be developed or considered. The second thing is when the application is being actually developed, then testing comes into existence and they go through each of the uh, components of the application being developed and verify, validate for its correctness, completeness, accuracy and so on. So as, so as you see, these two questions need to be answered by the testing team when they are actually validating and verifying the application being developed. And in order to, and, and after they do this, they are basically helping the project team or the stakeholders to maximize the ROI, the return on investment on, uh, of uh, what they have done to develop the application. They are helping in minimizing the risks so that there are minimal risks when the application is actually used in the production environment. And obviously they are helping control and optimize the cost so that the overall cost of quality is reduced. Now let's come to the SDLC which is basically a part of the SDLC itself. It is more of a subset of the SDLC. SDLC like we know stands out for software development testing, software uh, testing lifecycle I'm sorry. STL will give you a structured approach in terms of what are the specific activities that need to be performed to carry out the end-to-end -end testing activity. Now it is to be decided and controlled by the testing team on what is the STLC that they want to use. And this is definitely, this is uh, documented and maintained by the test plan which we will see later in uh, further slides. So like we had broken SDLC into different uh, phases, STLC is also classified into different phases like test analysis, test planning, test design, test execution, test reporting and test sign off. Let, let's quickly look at all of the uh, different phases of STLC so that we understand them better. The first one being test analysis, this is where this is followed and this is conducted in parallel to the requirements phase wherein the business requirements are reviewed, analyzed, the client expectations are being uh, verified and then the technical architecture, the high level and low level design is validated, verified and discussed and debated with the uh, technical team. The next phase obviously being test planning phase which includes detailed level of planning right from the test strategy on how will the testing be carried out, how will the environments be maintained, how will be the entry criteria, exit criteria, 
what are the different resources that will be required in terms of hardware, software, number of people, what are the tools that will be used, whether it will be manual testing, automation testing, what are the different types of testing, what it will be covered, if possible a testing schedule also on uh, how, how the testing schedule will embed with the overall project plan and so on. So all of these items are discussed in the test plan and test plan becomes more of a user manual or a guide for the testing team to be used across all different test activities. Next comes the test design phase wherein the test plan is actually brought into action. In test design phase, the testing team is documenting all the test scenarios, test cases in terms of uh, covering all the business requirements, client requirements, all the design activities and so on. Now, once these test cases, test scenarios are documented, reviewed, finalized, then comes the phase which is the actual test execution phase. In test execution phase, all the test cases, test scenarios which are documented are executed and obviously any anomalies, any defects, any issues, though those are observed during the test execution phase are logged and a particular defect life cycle is followed. This defect life cycle is again documented in the test plan, so a test plan will always be referred in all the phases of uh, STLC. Finally, the test reporting and test sign-off phase is triggered. Uh, what happens is at the end of each testing round, a detailed test report is produced, which will give you the details and statistics about what was tested, what was not tested, how was it tested, what are the defects uh, reported, what are the test cases that have been executed, not executed, and so on. And importantly, what happens is when you are about to deliver the application to the next environment, which could be staging or production environment, the testing team is expected to provide a test sign-off report, which basically includes a go or a no-go decision, which determines whether the particular build should be deployed to the next environment or should not be deployed. And that will obviously include all the risks that the testing team might want to highlight in terms of whether they are okay to certify that particular build or have it uh, held up in the current environment itself. Now, now that we have understood STLC, now let's look at the different types of testing. Now when we say different types of testing, according to different definitions and according to different classifications, there are different types of testing. If I have to classify different types of testing in terms of the methodology what is being followed, we can broadly classify it as white box testing, black box testing and gray box testing. White box testing is nothing but a testing which is conducted on the actual code that is written by the developers. The code is subject to a multiple unit tests or component level testing wherein the code is verified, debugged, maybe modified. All the if-else conditions, all the loops and all the uh, statements, all the LOCs, all the lines of code are verified, validated by the testing team and then uh, certified. Uh, not, not to mention over here that there are specific coding skills that are required by the testers to do this kind of, uh, to conduct this kind of testing. Uh, next and the most popular type of testing which everybody knows is the black box testing. In black box testing, the application is tested not without the code, it is, I'm sorry, it's tested without the code and tested only as the application from a front end perspective wherein the tester is using the application as an end user, they are putting themselves in the shoes of the end user and trying to imagine, trying to visualize the scenarios in terms of the business and scenarios could be positive scenarios, negative scenarios, error handling, it also includes the UI, it also includes the integration components, basically all types of testing which is possible without even touching the code, without even going to the uh, different uh, components of the development team which they are working on. Next comes the gray box testing, which is basically a combination of a black and white box testing. This, why this is a combination? Because it includes verifying the code against a particular functionality on, on the front end side. So basically it runs in conjunction of white box testing and black box testing and hence it is called as a gray box testing. Uh, that brings us to the end of uh, this particular chat. Thank you so much.